Welcome to the fourth day of national level workshop on research methodology on ethnographic study. I'm Dr. Rima Rabha and I'll be moderating this session. Before starting the session, I'd like to request the participants to put their audio mode off and after the session, we'll have an interaction, interaction session. Today, we are very glad and privileged to have amongst us Dr. Bharati Bharali, Assistant Professor, Department of Communication and Journalism, Guwahati University. Dr. Varali earned a dual master's degree in mass communication and geology from Guwahati University and got MPhil degree in cell and molecular biology as well. She enrolled in postgraduate studies in uh, journalism and communication at Guwahati University as a result of her interest in movies, literature, traditional folk media, and other forms of communication. She graduated with a master's degree in mass communication in 2007 from Guwahati University, earning first place. Her doctoral research entailed the study of eco-cinematic text in India with special reference to Assam and its effect on the pattern of nature film production practiced in this part of the country in the light of eco-cinema classifications and point of views of the directors. Dr. Varali started her teaching career at Center for Mass Communication and Journalism of Cotton University uh, in December 2007, and she moved to the Department of Communication and Journalism, Guwahati University in 2013. Dr. Varali is also actively involved in development communication research through UNICEF-funded projects since 2014 on social and behavioral change communication for adolescents in Assam. She also helped making community-based radio programs on science for women's health and uh, nutritional issues as a part of a sponsored project by National Council for Science and Technology Communication, Government of India. She is also an expert in media theory and science communication and associated with All India Radio and Duradarshan in various capacities as newsreader, copy editor, translator, etc. Thank you, Ba, for sparing some time for us today. Over to you. A very good morning to all of you. And thank you, Rima, who is more kind of uh, my own sister. And it was her request that I could not uh, say no. And thank you. And I would like to appreciate um, the IQSA cell of Bahana College for organizing such, a, such an extensive uh, research workshop on ethnographic uh, study. I don't think that such kind of extensive work uh, have been done by uh, others, uh, you know, uh, by giving so much detailing in the whole workshop in the uh, program schedule. I, I, was, I was quite surprised and I'd like to appreciate who have designed this course. And thank you for inviting me and for being a part of this um, uh, workshop. Um, Good morning to all the participants. Um, although I'm associated with uh, uh, various kinds of research, so I'm very new to the ethnographic uh, research. So I'd like to share my experience from my points of view uh, with the basis from some of the research background from books and others. But based on my own experience, uh, my involvement with uh, ethnographic filmmaking as a researcher, as a, a script advisor, and also as I am now involved with a project uh, funded by World Bank, which is conducted by uh, Indian Institute of Mass Communication, IIMC New Delhi. So based on that, uh, those research, whatever I have done till now, uh, I'd like to share my experience on uh, my designated topic. So I'd like to share the, uh, this uh, PPT.
Rima, can you share, please? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We will share. It's visible to all, right? Yes, it's visible. Yes. Okay. And uh, so my topic is conducting successful ethnographic interviews. Now, it's quite tricky to begin here in these days as you all have crossed four days of extensive research and you all know what is ethnography, what is uh, different aspects of research, I hope. Next slide, please. So, uh, Rima, why it is not coming in wide screen? Can you make? Uh, can you can you can you put that button? Slide yes, presentation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. I just want to give you a brief because all of you have already studied about what is ethnographic research. But uh, to begin with, ethnographic research is always a qualitative kind of research. It is not quantitative. It is not experimental. It is it is of a, a kind of research that one uh, that that wants to explore things which is happening it in its ground as in the social natural condition so it's a kind of qualitative research and uh, the researcher should be prepared to spend long periods of time for living and observing the culture socio uh, cultural approaches of a community the nature and environment from close proximity now this environment if you look at into the a figure in your right then you'll see this environment may cover any areas from political science from education folklore sociology mass communication or cultural studies so it is a kind of vast knowledge vast ocean of aspects where we can uh, uh, find a topic and go for extensive kind of research so next slide please Next slide, please. Am I audible? Okay. So now it depends on what kind of study you are doing or we are doing. Depending on that, whole interview procedure resides. So we need to be very clear what kind of a study actually we are presuming is it a macro ethnographic study the study actually that covers the whole culture of a community or a ethnic group now is it macro so macro is a large scale time bound and it, 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 it is a very long duration program a uh, research program and it covers almost all kind of areas of an ethnic group and this kind of uh, research uh, can be done uh, uh, in a longitudinal way in a research term that is uh, used for you know you can do repetitive research with macro ethnographic studies now is it micro ethnographic that means uh, are we talking about some smaller units, smaller areas, or smaller kind of subjects? And that means we are talking about a fragment of a big community ethnic group where we will take the subject. And is it critical kind of uh, research? That means use of critical paradigm to analyze factors uh, which uh, which uh, which may uh, lead for understanding of power factors hegemonical activities then any assumptions 
which can be critical and which involve uh, uh, differentiation or class class categories, all kind of aspects. So here is an example that is, um, say for example, we are talking about, uh, as I'm from media studies, therefore I'm giving you the example from media. So uh, if we are uh, doing a research on um, a Hispanic community in Spain, I'm giving you an example from a book because there might be controversy if I'm using some of the examples from very native and I give you finding without doing any research. Therefore, it is a, I'm giving you an example from a book and uh, say the subject can be a role of Spanish language community radio in Hispanic community. So it talks about the Hispanic community and how their community can be reflected, their language, Spanish language can be reflected in community radio programs. And in critical study, you may find the result like uh, the Hispanic community does not own a media channel and they don't control uh, the content of the media. So the media projects or the content of the media projects about the Spanish language is what the outsider's views are. So I'll come to that in the next, what outsider and insider. And is it a descriptive one? So we'll be focusing on descriptive one. That means the description or of uh, the smaller micro, micro ethnographic research, which we will find out our topic will uh, try to explore with descriptive uh, analysis. Okay, next please. Now, what actually, I know you might be aware about this fe uh, features of ethnographic research, but for my ease, I am just repeating, quickly repeating it. Now, ethnographic research put a researchers in the middle of a study. It is not a beginning of a study. Now, why it is not a beginning of a study? Because the ethnographic researcher needs to explore what already exists in natural condition, in a community, in an ethnic group. So you'll have to begin and you must have something in your hand before starting a research. It is not kind of making a reaction in a chemical laboratory. Therefore, it puts you in the middle of the study. And while we are talking about interview, you are at the very middle or at the center of the study where you need to, uh, you know, explore your review of literature. You have to design your study and then only we can come to the interview. Now, this ethnographic research is very different from any other kind of research where the researcher has to find out or analyze the part from the perspective of the informant or the participant. And our own views cannot be justifiable if we do not have views of the references of our respondent. Now, here, one researcher need to spend considerable amount of time in the field so that he get a non-biased or he or she gets non-biased analysis of or non-biased data or samples. Now it includes this ethnographic research. You might have already uh, done about all this kind of research techniques. So observation, interview, diary keeping, analysis of existing documents, photography, video recording, etc. So we are, I am talking today about this, a small part of this big ethnographic research, that is interview. Next slide, please. Now, once I know what I am going to do, once I know where I stand, then I will have to analyze what is my approach. Is it an ethic perspective or it is an emic perspective? So do you know what is ethic and emic perspective? Anyone? Yeah. 
Is there anyone? Participants, you can reply by raising your hands also, or you can message it in chat box. So, ethic and amic views are very important in uh, any kind of um, ethnographic research. Most conflict situations arises because of these two perspectives. You know, the ethic perspective is when, okay, okay, so someone has replied, thank you. So, uh, I, I'll, give, I'll tell about what is ethic. Ethic means you are from outside from a, for a community. So when the outsiders enters into a community and tries to find out the general scientific concepts or principles or theories or the life study that goes on into the life of a community as it is. Now, the ethic perspectives are almost biased. Because I am talking from my perspective, if I want to study a community from Arunachal Pradesh, community from Nagaland, then I am an ethic. Uh, I am bearing the ethic perspective for them because I am outside of the community. Another perspective is emic perspective, the uh, cultural patterns, traits, which is based on the informer's perspective. That means when the view comes from the inside of the community then it is the emic view and this combination of both ethic and emic view is important for ethnographic research now because some of us might not be involved in a community or might be I, we are outsider of a community for a community then we most of the time ethnographic research becomes uh, ethic perspective there are a lot of challenges for ethic perspective because I am an outsider. Therefore, I may not be allowed to enter into a community. I may not be allowed to access uh, their, their resources. I may not be allowed to uh, take full interview of people. I may not be allowed uh, to take, uh, you know, views of people. Maybe I, in some community, I may not be allowed to meet, mix up with the woman woman clan i might not be given full information or clan detail clan means uh, subgroups of uh, some tribes so or with similar uh, their characteristics so i might not be allowed to do anything if you have any experience in working with tribe tribes then you'll understand how they will react to it and this is a human nature we do not like to allow other people to enter in our community, do whatever they want to do the studies. But this is just, uh, that's why it is very challenging for any kind of ethnographic research, including making of a documentary film. Now, I would like to show you a clipping. I would like to request a, a technical person to kindly uh, play the, uh, play uh, till 1.49 1, 1. seconds the video so that uh, uh, here just please stop for a while pause for a while i like to say this is about uh, this this documentary is made on resonance of mother's melody by dipuya he got the national award uh, he is a national award uh, award documentary filmmaker and it was shown in MIF, mumbai international film festival and there he was uh, taken an interview how he Rose the ethnographic thing and how he uh, uh, how he actually uh, 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 prepared the film documentary film uh, it's a very good example from notice and this film talks about the whistling behavior whistling communication approach of a community in Meghalaya. so please play the video It's not audible. Just a minute, ma'am.
just a minute ma'am it's okay it's okay uh, i can also try if from my side as well if i can do the video only There's a practice in a village in Meghalaya. They whistle, they whistling. But I didn't know about the subject. But I searched, I asked all the people of Meghalaya, but nobody knows about the subject. They actually, they nobody think that that is that could be a subject. So nobody is bothered about this subject, or that it could this could be a subject. Uh, so even in, in our place also, we call someone by whistling, coo -coo -coo. from river, from this bank to another bank, if somebody is there, we call by whistling. You please observe what he says regarding is, it is how he different. entered to the community. So when I went with my friends to the village, it is a matrilineal system in Meghalaya, Al Khasi, because we can't open the camera. It's, in other places, we can go and shoot. It is very easy, but they don't allow to shoot, uh, shoot, because the family members, the head of the family is the women. So she may be very poor, she may be in the cultivation field, field, but you will have to ask. So at the first time, I was not allowed to shoot. So I went to my handy cam. Anyway, I had recorded some sounds. So uh, to mix up with the people, I one of my friends is a doctor in Shilong. So he told me we that I will make a health camp there to mix up with the people. So free free medical health camp he has arranged. So it, in that way we ha I have mixed up with the people. So after going out, I the, I found out that when I told the people to whistle. They okay, thank you in a for long way. Long. Uh, then I asked, her, oh, why are you okay. seeing this so long? So you, you you can see. So we can move to the PowerPoint presentation again. Back. So you can see if you have listened to the audio, you can see that uh, this this doc director is an ethic person. He has an ethic view, and therefore he is not allowed by the community people to do the recording of the events. But this documentary is available in YouTube. I would request all of you to kindly watch the documentary so that you can, you can, you know, experience a very beautiful um, behavior pattern, communication behavior pattern where whistling is the major communication system. So here you see the director has to make a health camp to enter or mix up with the community. So this means the ethic persons are, you know, your ethic view is very difficult uh, for any kind of ethnographic research. But an ethnographic research is incomplete. If, even if you are an ethic viewer, you have to take the emic perspective. You'll have to take the interviews of the respondents or your community members and that's how these two views are important so when we are talking about ethnographic interviews we are talking about the combination of both ethic and amic perspective so amic is the person who is belonging to the community a person from the inside who will give us the detail who will give us the data and amic ethic is most of the time not all the time some maybe the community person may do the research on their own community so in that case both the views are amic but the um, ethic viewers are those researcher who who which maybe maybe which who, who is maybe you and me who are from outside the community so next slide please 
so if we look at now coming to the interview how we are doing in which perspective then uh, we'll have to look at what is actually an interview an interview is a communication with a purpose we whenever there is a difference between interview talks discussions now discussions or talks are based on any issues any topic which is familiar to the people with both uh, interviewee or uh, you know the moderator and the participants but interview is a uh, a a dialogue a communication a face to face communication between two or a group in the group of individuals whom we can say as the person who is taking the interview is the interviewer and the participants or the respondent is interviewing whom we are going to talk about it is a non experimental method once people give you opinion it is a kind of opinion seeking process once people give you opinion we cannot do experimentation on that we can only find or take other kind of research to uh, get justify our <coughs> what we have to say <coughs> but we cannot do experimentation in the field <coughs> now we can get both qualitative and quantitative data after the interview <coughs> sorry so we can get both kind of data although i have said that ethnographic research is a kind of qualitative research but sometime we need some quantitative data as well say uh, for example if we are looking at uh, communication behavior on television watching how many television sets are available in a community so that is a quantity that's why we we can get that that answer will come from a quantitative interview process therefore we need both we can get both quantitative and qualitative data from interview now interview gives us opportunities to explore the thoughts beliefs behavior of any respondent next slide please so now if we look at how we will do the interviews it may be structured structured interview means we are taking a taking a very formal kind of interview now formal interview means we are taking some we are taking um, our, uh, pre pre planned or pre framed questions for them and these questions will not be uh, changed in any circumstances it may be structured it may be unstructured where we may not have any such kind of uh, formal interview there are no such kind of uh, you know schedule in our hand no proper schedule with questions then it may be semi structured semi structured means when i am going to the field with a questionnaire structured questionnaire i am taking i am i am giving all the pre design formats what i need but at uh, the site i feel that i need some extra questions i need to look on this site and then it becomes semi structured we can also uh, take interviews kind of focus group discussion nowadays focus group discussion is on the sars people like to do uh, uh, reputed uh, research organizations try to do focus group interview for validity and reliability in interview now focus group discussion is a group discussion where the people or participants are homogeneous in terms of their demographic profile and their education may differ but uh, socio cultural circumstances will have to be homogeneous and the age and the experience <coughs> level will have, have to be homogeneous in nature now this means when we are taking focus group discussion say <coughs> we are talking about the <coughs> use of chat gpt in 
education how it is going to challenge in that case our focus group may rely on in different level number one we can talk with the teachers and this group may have minimum of um, two to minimum maximum of maximum you can take uh, at, according to your own uh, comfort but not less than 12 so uh, sorry not uh, not 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 a maximum of 12 because uh, it will otherwise it was a, it will be a very big uh, big data that you will have to sum up in that case why we need homogeneous people because we need to do focus group discussion focus mean we are we are focusing on an issue with a group which has homogeneous kind of participants now in that case what happened it is a control kind of research say for example when we are talking about the chat gpt we can give a detail about what is chat gpt and i can ask your opinions i can then categorize what kind of uh, question answer you have thought about what kind of opinion you can give us and we can do this in our and then we can prepare the report and you have the next immediately after my discussion you have the report analysis kind of thing and most of the time in our colleges in our universities in our uh, decision making processes uh, we do the focus group discussion at the administration or policy level say for example our, your principal is uh, this workshop this particular workshop that i am in i am talking here is actually a focus group discussion you are not uh, the, the others who are not doing this uh, are interested in doing this workshop i'm not going to address although it is a college your college activity i am not addressing all the people from your college but i am in i i am in i am interacting with a group who is focused and we are talking about something so that we can get an opinion but my my thing is although it is a focus group discussion i'm not going it is not result oriented it is not a part of research it is kind of instruction but when i'm going i am doing a research then what will happen i will make uh, say for example i am working on a uh, impact on cinema <clears throat> impact of a film on or impact of uh, say for example cinema on a group of students then what i will do what is their perspective i'll show the film i'll conduct a group discussion and then i will uh, categorize i am repeating i am categorize what the opinions are say when i am giving the example say regarding the chat gpt what the teacher said that it will it will it will be an obstacle for giving assignments to the students because students may get copy down from the chat gpt answers so i hope you all know about chat gpt it is a, going to be a, our next uh, uh, next uh, what to say the challenges or uh, opportunities with ai education system <clears throat> and someone may say that no chat gpt my view is that chat gpt can be an assistance for helping us to get more knowledge and we can excel on that knowledge with the help of when i have the information from chat gpt so influence of chat gpt negative influence of chat gpt then someone might say that if we use chat gpt this will reduce the knowledge system of student so my third category will be will it affect on the knowledge generation process it will will it affect on teaching learning approach so from a group discussion we can take out the points we can note down this and we can analyze later on or prepare the report on what kind of um, uh, uh, opinion what kind of uh, uh, research elements are coming out as a finding from that group but we must have to remember that the group will have to be homogeneous in terms of demographic profile demographic profiles means they are uh, caste they are religion they are um, if you are doing on some religious uh, kind of thing if you are doing a 
uh, analysis on the students, then they should be student of class on which class you are doing, say class nine student, class uh, degree students, university students. So this should be the group should be homogeneous in their demographic profile and they should be addressed if you are talking about socio-cultural aspects the, the the particular respondents should also belong to the same socio-cultural aspects otherwise it will uh, it will have bias and it will have a non-reliability component and it will not give you the credit then comes the interview may be telephonic as we all know these days during after the corona uh, virus uh, all over the world we have been stopped and we have taken interviews during media particularly for the medias we took so much of telephonic interviews alone so these are various uh, types of interviews that we can uh, adopt next slide please <coughs> so <clears throat> this is very interesting. Ethnographic interview is nothing but is an art of asking right question in a right way at the right time and in the right environment. Now, right questions means what is your research wants? You should not ask any question <clears throat> that may hurt the sentiment or ethical, that may break the ethical aspects of a community. In the right ways, you see, whenever we are talking, whenever we are asking, we should know that the question what we are asking, if we are not projecting in a right way, it may give you a very different meaning or very different uh, behavioral approach can be generated. You may hurt people, may conflict arises, and you may not get the appropriate answer for the question. Then at the right time, this right time means even during the interview conductions, should know the behavior of the respondent and at appropriate time you should ask the appropriate question and in right environment you see we are now seeing the news coming out from manipur in a they is in a country situation so it is time is not convenient to visit manipur as an ethic person so the right environment the environment should be peaceful the environment should be comfortable for both interviewer and interviewee next please so it is a kind of art how to ask question now what will be your uh, steps to do number one you should select the informant or your respondent and when you have selected your respondent now how you will select the respondent there is a sampling technique so you can take uh, the general descriptive research. In that case, you can take different sample analysis and you can take the samples. Or you know someone earlier and you are taking help of a mediator and you are asking that I meet such as kind of people for my study. And in that case, you'll have to select the informant. And it is advisable if you are taking an interview, then the person whom you are taking, whether male or female, he or she should have the knowledge about the community and at least have involvement in the community. Some people are very shy in our community and they do not participate in any of the activities, communal activities. So we, we cannot take, uh, we cannot give the right data from such kind of participants. So once you have selected the informant and you are set for an interview, you should keep in mind in earlier that the informant is a human being with all his error. He may have anger, he may have frustration may have sadness may you may encounter different kind of emotions during the time of interview you should be prepared for at any moment he might or she might stop your interview you should be prepared for that it is not kind of thing that you please do this you please do this i need this i need this interview it is not kind of that 
you should be prepared and you should have extra timing for any kind of interview. You should also remember that your values may not coincide with your informant. Some people may like eating some food. Say someone is eating some foods which you do not like. But you need a question whenever he is answering. He is delightfully or she is delightfully saying that during this festival, we <coughs> like to eat such kind of things. We may, you may not like some drinks that may they have referred. You have some foods, beverages you have, they have referred. But you should not say, she, eh, is it a thing that people eat? So this kind of negligence or your value, if you are not in coinciding, you should not show any reaction because it may hamper your interview process. So you should remember that your values, then when you are going to a matriarchal society, you should remember that the society belongs or controlled by matriarchal society. I'll not like to quote the name of the film, but in a very recent film, a film of an ethnic group from Assam got very controversial because they have not, uh, you know, they have the film, the director, the, the whole team of the filmmaker had not stick to these values. The values they, they born on, they carry on from centuries are depicted in a very wrong way in that particular film. And therefore, this film got in, in you know, uh, repercussion controversy and they had, had, it had hurt the sentiment of the people. So you should value the people of your study. Then I have already said the help of an expert from your from the community if you need. Then this is important. You should choose someone with whom you can do the follow up if needed. And sometimes what happens when you are writing your report, you may need to follow up certain things. You may get confused. You may lose some data. So in that case, you need to follow up. And that's why you need to choose someone so that you can verify and follow up your uh, interview again so next please next slide please so next is important once you have selected your respondent then your uh, uh, your your job is to prepare the prepare for the interview now remember, I have already in the beginning said that it is an art, it is a skill to approach people with your questions in your that you need your research. So therefore, it is a skill that you need to inculcate, that you need to develop. And you should ask questions, and we can ask different types of questions immediately after this slide, we'll discuss about that. Second thing is listening. So you know, this is a very tiresome business taking interview. If you have taken interview, you will understand. But it is really a very, very tiresome business. People like to say most, if you ask, tell me some experiences of uh, on this X, Y, Z issue, they will say most of the time unnecessary things. You will have to listen carefully to find out the most important aspect that you want you need for your study people like to tell so much of things they try to even in our day-to-day -day life if we meet some people if you ask question they will give you uh, you know you need a five marks question kind of question they will answer you for you know 20 marks kind of answers so this kind of thing happened this is very tiresome very boring sometimes so you have you should have patience to listen your listen to your informant then comes you should take an assertive role whatever he or she says you should be very positive during the whole interview and this is so important to focus on both verbal and non-verbal communication behavior of the respondent now when we are doing an interview sometime my question may not be likable by my informant and I should look at the non-verbal communication, that the, 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 the body language that he or she projects, the facial expressions. 
if he or she is not comfortable i should not repeat or focus on the same question or i should not force him or her to answer it you may not get the right or appropriate data for your study then you we should have appropriate eye contact you know um this is a very common behavior of animal catchers those who uh, catch the animals they always try to this is a, 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 a natural process they try to have eye contact with the animals and then they try to capture it and it, they say that this is an established fact and they say that if you have eye contact even with an animal you can you can get what you want and that is also applicable in any kind of interview we should not look at here and there because our focus may delineate our focus may deviate from our <coughs> whole interview process our respondent may <coughs> sorry may get disturbed and therefore we should have appropriate eye contact and by the word appropriate i also mean the gesture according to the community not all community like to have direct eye contact you should also remember this thing that if the person is some community does not allow to have direct eye contact with the woman children or sometime if the elderly people are in front of you so by appropriate eye contact i mean depending on the situation you should decide what kind of or you should understand what kind of eye contact you should have should you have direct eye contact or you should not you should look at you know other parts or other any objects so that those are some of the basic things the interviewer should uh, uh, take into account before preparing for an interview so next slide please so what kind of questions we will ask in an interview next slide please yeah so you can ask structured questions that means very specific and you are exploring and um, uh, your research based very structured earlier you have written you have verified the questions and you are taking the schedule with you and that is a very structured questions it may be descriptive you may ask a broad or general questions you can ask say uh, please tell me your daily experiences daily ex uh, daily work activities before an activity before an before a festival or please tell me your daily activities so we can find out the daily different kind of works or uh, belongingness of a male or a female participant of a community if we even look at their daily activities so this is a kind of descriptive questions you may also ask contrast questions now what is a contrast question you may ask uh, what does you mean by this particular terminology what does you mean or you can ask uh, like a uh, you also wear uh, you 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 also wear such our, like our kind of um, dresses isn't it or um, what are the different parts of uh, what kind of um, meaning you generate or what is the meaning of your this particular ritual process so we can ask such kind of contrast question next slide please so putting the appropriate questions make your interview successful now we are moving uh, say hypothetically you assume that you are uh, in front of your respondent during the conduction of interview we should remember to express our interest i'm so interested on this topic i'm so interested on your community i remember one uh, paragraph from human borgohai's uh, atmanukhandan the retrospection of his own life and autobiography when he went to nagaland the people offered him uh, for taking an interview of a political person before and before discussion when the conduction was going on interview was going on the people <coughs> gave him, them the traditional food with uh, some meats of animals what he had which he had never tasted before so in that moment if he had expressed his 
you know bad interest you know his 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 uh, unwillingness then it would have not shown the interest of the interviewer to the respondent when he took the food the political leader got satisfied and happy and he was willing to he was you know sharing also his experience his likings for the food so this is how you need to say your interest even if you are not uh, you know your your views or values are not uh, coinciding so you should show your interest to the community then you should listen carefully i say i have already discussed and you should be engaged during the interview when the person is saying you should not be silent all the time you should be engaging or you should be promoting to ask questions do not give your own interpretation no you should do this you should not do this this kind of interpretations should not be given during the time of interview one of the key elements of conducting an interview is observation you know about observation i have seen your program you have the observation methodology yes please any question <clears throat> yes please chubapadi may ask your question you can put it in chat box also okay yeah you can put it in chat box i can also answer uh, at the same time i can also answer it so the next immediate thing is your observation so observation of the whole environment as well as the respondent you are taking the interview you should maintain the ethical principles and i have seen that ethical principles are also there in your uh, workshop so i am not going to detail description but one thing that i would like to describe say is that you should be very very cautious when you are taking an interview of women as well as a child you should not photograph um, children without the permission of their parents this is very important then do the appropriate documentation now by appropriate i mean what the community offers you to do the documentation do they allow do they allow you to do photographs or they allow interview uh, to be recorded or they simply allow you to write certain things or they do not allow to uh, allow you to do the recordings of uh, certain areas certain things certain comments so in that case you should respect the uh, be, be, uh, respect the opinion of the respondent then at the last you should acknowledge the respondent as well as his or her community so next slide please and in the next slide you will see a successful interview depends on certain things it is not so much of clear to me now so just i am just repeating if it is clear to all of you uh, i'm 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 almost coming to a uh, very closer to the end so a successful interview needs some elements number one greetings and number two that i have not said yet giving ethnographic explanations now this explanation includes giving project explanation what is your project what you want to uh, find out what is your aims and objective why you are coming to that particular community not to others what is your result going to be and are you going to uh, uh, are you going to acknowledge them and interact with them before you are giving your final report then giving question explanation sometimes some question needs to be explained that i need this question i need that question so then giving recording explanation may i do this recording if i do this recording in what purpose i am doing the recording is it only for academic purpose or i will get a business or i will get some commercial advantages of this recording so uh, will i be stick only to the academic purpose i will not give to any one of the people of or any organization you should explain that then you should promote them to talk or talk into native language explanation giving native language explanation 
helps us of course we need a translator or we we need to put on again question on what this meaning mean, means but this gives you the natural uh, recording or natural research then giving your interview explanation that i want to do interview for this purpose and i want to give take the interview and i my your 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 observation your opinion will keep confidential i will not let anyone know what is your view so such kind of explanation you may need to give then you should be sticking to the ethnographic questions which already i have discussed descriptive structural and contrast whatever you wish to select then asymmetrical turn taking this means when you are talking about certain issues you should also be focused as i said there uh, he or she might delineate from the topic so you, in that case you should by showing your interest you should uh, you should have the skill to take him or her back to your interest your interview then expressing cultural ignorance i have given the example of home and Burbuhai. then repeating repeating means some questions may be needed to repeat and sometimes his or her opinion should need to be repeated then restating informants term then uh, when we talk about we say uh, when we are con doing conversation sometimes we may say so as you said as you say this can we do this so restating informants term or incorporating informants term then creating hypothetical situations <coughs> so this means when we are giving hypothetical situation it means we are we are creating a situation where we try to conduct in a very smooth way we try to do control on the interview and asking friendly question of course you need to be i said it you cannot be de using derogatory words you cannot be using uh, words that hurts the sentiments or you cannot uh, use the words that people might not deserve so you should be very careful regarding that next pl slide please <laughs> So uh, uh, by summing up, I would like to say you, I'll share my experience with uh, my research. But before that, regarding the formal, what is uh, ethnographic interview, it is an in-depth research, you should remember. And you need, uh, for question setting, you need extensive literature review as your basics. You should plan your interview according to the suitability of the environment respondent and your own circumstances if you are ill for just summing up of your research timing you are doing uh, you know timing you maintaining you you are going somewhere but you are not putting your whole effort that this is not desirable design your proper research questions you should frame your research and then maintain appropriate behavior observation and coordination at the end please uh, next slide please i am associated with a project as i said you uh, uh, in a uh, developing communication strategy behavior in meghalaya basins it is funded by world bank and what type of questions we have asked let us just see as an example uh, next slide please so what type of questions we have asked before that we must to know we have tried to know what we want to explore when we are talking about communication strategy what we are trying to explore so we are trying to first explore the demographic profile demographic profile means what is your name communities uh, uh, communities uh, uh, name gender is educational qualification so i hope you know what is demographical profile then behavior as we are doing on communication behavior we talked about the behavior pattern on communication and behavior pattern for general issues now next slide please so we ask some types of questions the number one type types of questions was dichotomous questions yes or no so we asked do you watch radio yes oh sorry television radio uh, yes no 
we asked uh, do you have radio sets at your home yes no do you read newspapers yes no so this kind of dichotomous questions we have first put second we uh, we we have given them multiple choice questions now this multiple choice questions were uh, like um, what kind of uh, 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 as we have also seen some other general aspects, so I'm giving you a general example. Uh, what kind of uh, 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 water you like to prefer? Filtered pre uh, water, hand, hand filtered or uh, naturally made uh, filter, water from the river, etc., etc. So multiple such question. Then cafeteria question, most closer view. So cafeteria questions are, you know, now, do you think Meghalaya is the best place for raising, for having internet? Oh, it is very good. Not good. You can say that uh, the respond. you can set questions, not good. Uh, sometime it is good. So it is a closer view we are getting. Then rank question. If I'm giving you opportunities, what kind of uh, uh, in questions you would like to uh, ask us? Uh, say, what kind of uh, media you would like to uh, use? Say you are talking about mobile communication, then we have uh, asked about rank the following social media you used to, you are used to. Number one, Facebook, number two, LinkedIn, number three, YouTube, number four. So the ranks. Then we ask them contingency question, continuation to the earlier question. Now this continuation of the earlier question means, uh, as you have mentioned that you liked uh, Facebook, how many time you, how much time you like to be absorbed in Facebook in the whole day, two hour, four hours. So it is a continuation of my earlier rank question. Then I may give, we have given uh, Likert questions that government is doing, um, doing better for education system in Meghalaya strong agree strongly agree somewhat agree disagree so this kind of like like or dislike question so that is we call as likert question so you i hope you know about the likert scales and all this in your course of study then this is interesting bipolar question now bipolar question is opposite question actually you want to study the behavior of a person this is very important for behavior study as we were doing behavior study therefore we ask most of the time bipolar question so this means uh, say for example i'm giving you a normal day-to-day -day life i'm asking a person uh, please tell me what is your preference he may have lot many preferences so he may say i like walking i like jogging i like uh, going out uh, uh, every day i like to spend my time in uh, uh, telephone i like to spend my time in uh, this kind of thing so we find out bipolar questions are important and we find out the behavioral aspects of the uh, person of the community so uh, the last slide uh, uh, so this is how we ask the questions so at the end so i have uh, discussed about uh, I just summing up, I have discussed about uh, what is called um, ethnographic research, just, an, uh, just a beginning for my topic. Then what is uh, interview? What kind of questions we can take? And what kind of um, uh, activity, what kind of activities we should prefer while we are doing the interview? how to prepare for interview and how we should be um, behaving at that moment. And I also tried to give you an, uh, an overview of some of the questions that we did during our experimentation in, uh, in, uh, in Meghalaya as a case study. And also I tried to give, show you a video how the ethic perspective is very difficult. And most of the time you should remember that you are an ethic for the community and we should behave according to the community and we should have the respect for the community. And at the end, I want to repeat it, that it is an art of talking art of discussion art of participation and putting question at the right time at the right environment and at the right way so with that i would like to sum up and thank you again rima and iqsc members and the college authority for giving me this opportunity 
And thank you. If you have any questions, I can take one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Bharti Bhali, ma'am, for this such an insightful session. As explained, ethnography is qualitative kind of research and can be categorized into groups, uh, macro ethnography and micro ethnography. So citing and citing an example of community radio program in Spanish community while explaining the features of ethnographic study mentioned ethic and emic perspective of, of ethnographic research. Ma'am has also discussed the interview methods in this particular field of research. The quantitative data is also required as explained by ma'am in ethnographic study and interviews may be structured, unstructured, semi-structured and focus group discussion telephonic also. While discussing the focus group discussion, the focus group discussion should be homogeneous in demographic profile and with same socio-cultural components. And the questions for the interview should be also structured, descriptive and contrast questions. Finally, ma'am has explained the factors which lead to a successful interview. Thank you, ma'am for this session and now this session is open for discussion the participants can ask their questions by putting their audio mode on or they can ask in chat box also we can read it and man can reply through thank you so much i just want to say a very personal thing here i have seen one name here a participant yes. Yes. So it is so sensitive for me actually my sister in the morning yes in the morning i just got confused that whether hearty is you know through the battery rally or is there any such participant name by that name also i asked the coordinator hello hello can i see your yes, face no, no, actually, thank you. You have said that informative session, but uh, I just want to let you know that my elder sister's name is also Gatribali. She had an untimely demise in the last year, so I just got shocked by the name. You know, uh, uh, I don't know how to react. Thank you. Actually, I Actually, I was uh, thinking of dedicating this uh, whole topic in the name of my sister, but I thought it is so much personal. But yes, I, I saw the name. It's okay. Thank you. I and it's it's a metaverse. Uh, here, I just like to so, say a very different um, aspect, which is uh, you know in discussion now. It is. It's a, the whole world is a metaverse. Sometimes we see the same face, same kind of person in the world, and. I'm just seeing the same name in a very same region in the same Assam. So it's a world of metaverse. Okay, thank you. Anyway, any question if you have, please. The session is open for discussion. If you have any question, please raise your hand or you can put it in chat box. It was actually a very monotonous topic and very tough topic and challenging topic. I tried to make it as much as possible easier. So if you have any questions. So I like to say one interesting thing that is if you have no questions, this might mean that uh, uh, either two, two, two options can be here. So it can be a dichotomous situation, yes or no. Or it can be, you know, it is a dichotomous situation. It might be so good 
that you have understood everything of course i have seen so much of comments and thank you and it might be happening that whatever i have said there is nothing that goes to your mind and it everything when goes beyond your you know the level of antenna we we used to say so uh, i take the positive note because interviewer yes. process yes. should be you know, very positive, positive. So, yes. So oh, I have someone has said that I have understood yes. no questions. Thank you. So no much. questions. But wow. actually, wow. ma'am has uh, will also share uh, study material and a book, and we will share it to the participants in our uh, participants group. Uh, the participants will get those materials by the evening. Uh, actually, we should thank ma'am for sharing all those valuable study materials to us. Thank you again, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. There are so much examples you can study. And uh, with that uh, note, uh, so everything is so clear. Thank you so much. Uh, but I would like to request all of you be open and do question. Then only you'll get us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Can I leave? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much.